Today we are going to see the difference between a dynamic layout and a repeating dynamic layout RDL. So basically dynamic layout is nothing but it's a container to hold various fields or to call other dynamic container. So for example whenever I drag and drop a dynamic container as you can see here this is the dynamic layout. So basically in this dynamic layout I can drag and drop various other controls say for example now I am going to drag and drop some fields like text input some drop down some integer input I, am, I want to drag some date control to enter some start date time and end date time I also want to add a decimal control to enter say some salary Maybe I also want to add an email control to add the email address. I want to add some remarks. It should be a larger text area. I also want to select some values from a predefined list of values. Maybe a drop down control. As you can see here, these all are the different fields, different UI elements. When you drag and drop in the back end, a property is not associated with it still. If you double click it, if you click on here on this gear icon or you can double click, there is no property here. So this field you have added but when you press save you will get an error. Okay, you did not get an error but you got some warning. We will see what that warning is. Table type cannot be none. Okay. Uh, the thing is we are able to add these fields to the UI it's good but the problem is when user enters something in the UI it should be stored in some property right in which property should we say for example you are not getting any values in the drop down say you add, enter some values here those values we have to store in the back end in some property in some database table. So for that purpose what you need to do is you need to associate it with one property. So now what will happen whenever user enters anything in this text input then whatever value user enters in this field that will be stored in coverage level field. So uh, uh, as you can see here there is one more option called use property default so label value is same as property value if you select this if you don't select this then you have to enter the label value so I am entering enter label here so that you can understand so you have to enter the label value here so pega dif differentiates between property and the UI. These all are the UI elements but still they are not associated with the property. You double click, you enter some date time property so that whatever date user enters that is stored in that property. Of course for now last name is not a date time property but you have to add a associate a date time control with a date time property only. So whenever you double click on the gear icon you can see the control here. This is the date time control can change the control as well. You can change this to say as it is last name it should not be a date control. So it should be some text input. You can change like this. Also you can select revert to property default. What is meant by revert to property default? Say for example when you open that property you can see that the UI control mentioned is PIX text input. So as you can see here control is inherited from the property through inheritance concept. Control can be defined at the property level in the property rule form. It can also be defined in the section level. So here we are inheriting. We are not if, if we select anything explicitly here we are overriding that. Now we are not selecting anything means we are inheriting on what is defined in the property rule form itself. Now this is called a dynamic layout. It is very responsive depending on the screen width. To, the fields will auto rearrange so that there is no horizontal scrolling required. Now say if stakeholders tomorrow come and tell that I don't want like this I want it in 
single line all all these fields to appear in the single line then select in line means in a line in line means in a line so after this file fields there is no space so they came here in line means in a line say tomorrow again they tell no in line is not good uh, maybe show them in two columns then you can select container format sorry layout format other you can select some formats like inline grid quadruple means in four columns you can select inline grid double so they will come in two columns say if you want in three columns you select inline grid triple so this is how we used to work earlier but now what pega is telling is do not use this section based architecture say bye bye to this section based architecture use design templates so convert this section to a design template by default if you create any view from app studio it will be in the form of a design template only use design template or templateized view because they support even dxapi they even support runtime editing they even support more modularized ui so when you click on convert to design template now it is in the templateized fashion so here also now everything is coming in one column say you want to show in a different column then you select change here you, can, you have less number of options but you still have a plenty you have a number of useful options for example you want two column layout you select two column as you can see here now all these properties will come in two columns so this is a section inside a section it is like template inside a template say you want three column tomorrow you just click on change you select three column that's all it's as simple as that all the fields will come in three columns you can save and use it this is called as templateized editing the advantages of templateized section size you can create views and edit views from app studio even at runtime you can change the views you can by using pega dx api uh, even for normal user even from the case view at runtime you can make changes to the fields and it supports pega cosmos theme as well so basically a dynamic layout is one which contains various fields grouped together coming to repeating dynamic layout so this is a repeating dynamic layout wherein you can organize different fields and that keeps on repeating multiple times depending on the number of data you can give a source as a page list so that each page contains all these properties and this is page 1 page 2 page 3 like that it goes on going on so coming to repeating layouts repeating layouts are a type of layout used to organize list tables and other repeating structures this type of content can repeat an arbitrary number of times repeating layouts provide a structure for ensuring that the, that the display represents the content elements consistently so there are different types of repeating layers one is the table layout this is a table layout a table layout is useful when you want to present tabular data in a series of columns and rows so these are the rows these are the columns it is something like the excel table format this is called as a repeating grid or a repeating grid or a table grid this is a table layout say if you are having any images generally then you should not use a table layout so you are having a map control so the ui is not at all good here if we are having only like normal excel sheet like name id description remarks everything will come in one or two lines then only you can use table layout see here map well map map control is present in this cell because of which it is elongated and because of this uh, it is like see there is lot of space here there are uneven rows so when there are images or big big controls or big big data is there then you have to use it's better to use repeating dynamic layout repeating dynamic layout is useful when you want to group and present content in a non linear mono aesthetic format so this is linear format here listing name listing name one listing name two listing name three address address one address two address is linear format here non linear format first name address price number of guests book name address price number of guests book so this is non linear formats 
So dynamic layouts organize non-tabular information, whereas repeating layouts or repeating dynamic layouts organize information that allow you to present content in a non-linear format. Thank you.